Hi, good morning and welcome to church. This is the Oak House Church and we're about to start the School of the Spirit. The School of the Spirit in Oak House Church is the Sunday School where we learn about the Word of God and we let have an in-depth knowledge of what God is doing. So I would encourage you to sit back, not change the dial and watch. We ask you, Lord, today to speak to us again as we sit at the very feet of our Master, Jesus Christ. Give us this day our daily bread. Open our eyes. Wonderful Holy Spirit, teach us the very oracles of God's word. Open our eyes and understanding. Bring this truth of your word in a way and manner that everyone will hear and understand and be converted. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at um, another important aspect of our lives, and that is how to take your thoughts captive, how to arrest your thoughts, how to take your thoughts captive. And we begin with Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses four and five and the bible says for the weapon of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds and then verse five says casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. How we may control our thoughts how we may bring the thoughts to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Now, what is thought or what are thoughts? Thoughts are forms created in the mind. Thoughts are forms that are created in the mind. What did I say? Because I know your mind is not here at all. Thoughts are words or forms created in the mind. They are imposed on the mind. And they come through what we see, what we look at. They form a picture in our mind. They also come through what we hear, that is sound. They create impression in our minds. They also come through what we smell. They create impression in our mind. They also come through what we touch. And the things that we taste. These are the forms through which thoughts are created or formed in the heart or in the mind of an individual. Thoughts determines 
your disposition, thoughts that are created in your mind through either what you see or what you touch or what you smell or what you look at. They affect your dispositions. They determine your actions. They determine your reactions. The way you, why you react the way you react, why you act the way you act, why you look the way you look, Sometimes you are excited, sometimes you are depressed, sometimes you are not happy, sometimes you are in a moody position or situation, sometimes you are excited and so bright. It is as a result of the state of your heart. That is why your thoughts the thought that is going on in your heart determines the overall outcome of your life. You cannot live outside of your thoughts. Everything about your life begins with a thought. I feel happy. I feel excited. I feel elated. It is a thought, the position of the disposition of your heart. I'm gloomy, I'm depressed, I'm moody. I'm not happy, I'm downcast. It is state of your heart, the impression, the thoughts. Proverbs chapter three, uh, 27 verse, Proverbs 23 verse 7. Proverbs 23, verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so he is. You see, the way you think in your heart is the way you are. You cannot overlook it. The way you think, what you think in your heart, that is what you become. You are what you think. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, he says, to keep your heart with all diligence, the reason is because for out of it are the issues of life. When you see somebody excited, it is because of the thoughts that is present at that moment in that person's heart. When you see somebody angry and furious, <clears throat> it is because of the impressions he has had towards someone or towards somebody. It's as a result of, it's a build up, it's been in the heart. So you see, everything about our life is dependent on the state of the thoughts of your heart. What you are thinking in your heart is what you are. You cannot be anything outside of what you think. And that is why the book of wisdom says to guard your heart or keep your heart because from that your heart comes everything about your life. Everything, the totality of your life comes from what you think. So, and we say that what you think comes as a result of what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, what you feel or handle. It comes through the senses. So there are basically two types of uh, thoughts. There are the positive thoughts and there are the negative thoughts. So the one that destroys our lives are the negative thoughts. When we begin to give attention to negatives, thinking negative thoughts, allowing negative thoughts, permitting negative thoughts 
negative imaginations and depressions and all of that towards situations or circumstances or towards people. That will determine how your life turns out. So when you begin to think negative about someone or about a situation, the way you look at situation, the way you look at circumstances of life will determine the outcome, how you react to that situation or how you act in that situation or how you are how you're disposed in that situation. So positive and negative. <coughs> Excuse me. If you look at um, in Matthew chapter 15, verse 19, talking about the negative thoughts. Matthew 15, 19 says, For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts murders, adulteries, fornications, theft, false witness, blasphemy. You know what this thing is saying? There is nobody that will ever fall into fornication or fall into adultery or fall into theft or false witness. It doesn't just happen. How it happens, first of all, is that you allow, you begin to nurse that kind of thought in your heart. It starts, if you don't nurse it in your heart, if it doesn't exist in your mind and all of that, you won't do it. If it doesn't exist, you won't do it. If it comes, it will over, you will overcome it. When you are not thinking about it and it comes, you overcome it. You will walk over it. The word actually attracts the actions or the whatever is because you will nurse those things in your heart in the first place. It is when you begin to think about how to steal people's money. You first of all begin to think it in your heart. If you are not thinking about how to steal people's money and you don't have such thoughts in your heart, if you see people's money, you won't touch it. There might be a temptation at that moment to touch it, but you will not. But if you have had it over, it, because it has been in your heart over time. He's waiting for opportunity. That is why God said, that is why he says, Anyone, any man that looks at a woman, for example, lustfully, if you look at a woman lustfully, you say you have committed what? Adultery, or you have committed fornication. You have not slept with a man. You have not slept with a woman. You have not committed that act. You have not done it physically. You have not stolen the money. But in your heart, you are thinking about stealing that money. You say you are guilty. But you have not done it. But you are guilty. The same offense, the same punishment that is going to be given to the person that stole that money is the same punishment that is going to be given to the person who have that thought in his heart. Give it to me. If you look at a woman lustfully, or look at a woman to lust after her, he said, But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath done what? Committed what? Adultery with her in his heart. Has the person been caught in the act of adultery? Has he been caught in the act of adultery? No. So why is it that he is guilty? It's a punishment. So that you can see what, how this thing goes, how this thing works. 
where the greatest fight you fight as a Christian, the greatest battle you fight as a Christian is a fight within, which is the fight that is going on in your heart. That is where the greatest of all the warfare. That is where you see some, some great prayer warriors, intercessors. They have interceded and warned after the spirit and all of that. And then at the end of the day, they come down again. They have, Satan just made a mess, mess of them. Their hearts. The greatest battleground where the devil war fights, the greatest of all the fights is in the heart. He sows that seed and allows you to accept that seed or buy into that idea, that falsehood. The moment you take it, that's how he fights his battle. He has already won. You have not done the mis mischief. You look at a woman, you look at a man, you look at anything, you think about it, how to carry out that action. You are planning how to steal, how to go and rob a bank, how to go and rob somebody and all of that. You have not robbed the person, but you are guilty in the eyes of God. So God's method, God's ways of judgment and dealings and all of that, they are different from our own ways. And what God is going to judge, what God judges, he judges the thoughts in the heart, the intents of the heart. That's what he judges. Not just the action. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside what? All malice. Where is malice? Where is the malice? It's in the heart. Where is guile? What about hypocrisies? What about envies? What about evil speakers? They are all in the hearts, in these hearts. They are inside. And that is why God is saying you must lay them aside. You must keep them out of your life. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and now, and what? The sin which doth easily beset us. They are inside of us. And I told you how those sins of adultery, of mother, and lying and cheating and stealing and all of that, how they come about, is because of what we think. And what you think is as a result of what you see, what you hear, what you eat or taste, what you smell, what you handle. That is what gives, because that is how Satan works. That is the means or the channel through which Satan fights his battle. He fights through the flesh. So he imposes those thoughts and he brings it. For example, now you just look at a woman. Very beautiful woman. He gets attractive to you and all of that. You've seen it. Then the next thing, that, that impression stays in your heart. You begin to plan. Think, I wish I could have this woman. I wish I could have this man. The same way you want to see a beautiful woman or maybe a woman or a man that you love. Falling down is because of what you see. You have seen her. 
Everything about life begins with the thought. If you're able to control and manage your thought, you are a great man. The extent to which you will carry the glory and the power of God, the extent to which you will prosper, the extent to which you will succeed in life, with God or not with Satan, not with the world, I'm talking about with God, is the extent to which you rid yourself of all this and make sure that your heart is clean. You don't think negative or bad thoughts or you don't permit evil thoughts. And also there are good thoughts. You know, I told you there are two basic types of thoughts. There is the negative thoughts and there is the positive thoughts. If you look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, it tells us about the positive, the good thoughts that we think. He said, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things, things that are honorable, things that are, so think on these things. So there are two basic ways we think, either in the positive or we think in the negative. And I've told you, the thought that is going on in your heart determines the disposition of your life. Number two, it determines your actions, what you are going to do. Number three, it determines the way you react to situations and circumstances of life. It's as a result of what is in your heart. If you're the type that are not nurses, bitterness and anger and all of that in your heart, the moment somebody offends you or does something bad to you or says something bad, you give it back to the person. It's the state of the heart. That's where everything begins. How do we get into this problem that we find ourselves? Negative thoughts. Because before you know how to handle your thoughts, before you know how to take your thoughts captive, you have to understand what they are, how they come about, what are the things and all of that that happens. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 7, <clears throat> in Matthew chapter 18, verse 7, it says, Woe unto the world because of what? Offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come but woe to, the, to that man by whom the offense cometh. So, bad thoughts come as a result of offense. When I offend Mrs. Ajiri now, Mrs. Ajiri, for example, will feel bad. He will start to think negative towards me. Her feelings towards me will be bad. She will not like to see my face again. She will not like to greet me. She will not like to smile with me or chat with me again. It will be thinking something bad and all of that. It's because of offense that will make her do. And so he might now decide to speak evil against me or towards me to another person. He will sit with another person. He will now start discussing the person and all of that. That's how it happens. Offense. That's why he said, definitely offense must come. You can't pray it out. There is, you can't fast it away. It, must, it will come from your wife. It will come from your husband. It will come from your brother. It will come from your sister. It will come from your pastor. It will come from your fellow brethren, from, from your co-workers, from everybody around you. They will come because we live in an offensive world. The world that is full of offense. They will steal your money. They will do all kinds of things, lie against you and all of that. The Bible says definitely it will come, but woe unto him by which he comes. And what will be your response when such a thing happens? Luke chapter 17, verse 1. 
Then said he the, unto the disciples, it is impossible that, but that offense. So, so he was saying the same thing here. It is impossible, but that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. Offenses will definitely come. Somebody must annoy you. Somebody must do something bad to you. Somebody must offend you. Somebody must lie against you. Somebody must disappoint you. Somebody must betray the trust you repose on him or her. It must surely happen. How you respond, how you react, is as a result of the impression that you have in your heart towards that person. James chapter 1, verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempt ye any man, verse 14. He said, but every man is tempted. Look at how offense. Look at how negative thoughts build up in our lives. Look at how it builds in our lives. He said, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. You see somebody wearing a particular kind of dress for women or kind of hairstyle, and so, you crave to get it. You start, if he's a married woman, you will go back to your house, to your husband. You now put pressure on your husband. You begin to harass your husband. You begin to say all kinds of things and all of that. Manipulate him, carry faces, do all kinds of things in order for, to get him to do that. You see, it's as a result of what you have seen from another person so you look at it, you want to have it. So when that thing builds, so that is how it starts. First of all, it starts with the mind. So, but he said, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own loss. What you are thinking about somebody. You are lost in after that thing. You want to have it. He said, and then that thing pulls you. You are, you are attracted by it and you are enticed. Verse 15. He said, then when the loss has had conceived, it becomes a seed now. So it has built and formed in your heart. Then it bringeth forth what? Sin. That is action. Then you give action to it because once it is there, you're going to give action to it. So you see, everything that you do in your life today, whether it is good, whether it is bad, it is as a result of what is going on in your heart. It can't just happen in the moon or from the blues. It begins with a thought. So that thought, when you conceive it in your heart, the next thing is that you will carry it out. And when you have done it, that is what is called sin. And then what, when you have committed that sin, then it leads to death. That's how. So death does not just come. When you see the people die, it didn't just come. It is not death that came and died. Something attracted it. Because if death is just visiting anybody that he sees and all of that, nobody will be alive till today. Everybody would have died. If you don't have a cube of sugar here on this table, you will never see an ant or those ants. You won't see them. The reason why you don't see lizards everywhere here and all of that is because there are nothing to, for them to eat. So once you put those things here, you attract them. They are going about looking for investors to come from abroad and they do what? and invest in Nigeria. Is it not what they are doing? They all, the government of the nation, I mean of Nigeria, the, the past ones and the present one. That's what they are doing. 
but it has not worked. Has it worked? No. Do you know the simple reason? Because there is nothing on ground to attract them. There is nothing on ground to attract them. So what you need to do is to put those things that will attract them, put them in place, and you don't even need to go to them. You don't need to go to them. They will come on there. They will see it. They will come. So you have a better a power of negotiation and all of that. You won't be at their servitude and at their, at their mercies. The same thing. So sin and death and all of that cannot come until they find something Jesus said the power of darkness after he finished praying and all of that with his disciples. He said now is the hour of darkness. He said the prince of this, uh, the prince of this world has come. But he has nothing in me. So he can't touch me. And they told him somewhere, some time ago, they told him that the, uh, Herod was looking for you and all of that. He said go tell him. There is nothing he can do. He, can, he doesn't have the power to anything over me, except me, I lay down my life. If I don't do that, you can't do anything. You can't keep because I don't have anything that will attract death. So he willingly and willfully surrendered his life. The reason for death is sin. The reason for sin is lost. The reason for lost conception. You see it. You like it. You want it. You go and sleep with it. Not dream and think about it in the night. You wake up. The thing is there. It becomes, it has conceived. So opportunity is waiting. Because once it is conceived in your heart, opportunity must come. And then you'll carry it out. And then when you carry it out, sin, death. If you want to avoid death, what do you do? Avoid sin. It won't come to you. If you don't want mosquito in your house and in your environment, what do you do? Make sure there is no stagnant water. You will see them. Keep stagnant water around you, you will see them. It's, it's a simple, it's simple, A, B, C. It's not complicated. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Temptation is not a sin. But it is when you allow it to stay inside. You can never stop birds from flying over your head, over your house. Can you? No one can stop birds from flying over your head or flying over your house or flying over the street and all of that. But what you cannot allow, what you can do is to, what you will not allow is for the bird to perch on your head. The DSTV in my house is very close to my window. So, I come out, I go down to the, I come down to the stairs, outside the house, I mean the building, on the walkway, I saw fecal droppings, feces of beds and all of that on the floor, on the ground. I said, because every other place is neat except this one, I saw the pool of whatever. I looked up. I saw beds, two of them. That's where they come to stay. So when they perch there, they will be dropping their feces on the ground and all of that. And the whole thing mess the ground up. So I said, what am I going to do? So one of these days, I, sometimes I will say in my room, I want to open the window. I will see those birds sitting on, those, um, on that uh, DSTV. 
sitting there, two of them, and they are pooping, and the thing is falling. So what do I do? I pursue them. So once in a while, once as long as I'm in the room, I look around, I open the window. Sometimes I will see them. When I open the window, I see them, and I will pursue them. So, that they, so when I began to do that, the frequency with which they come started reducing. And then after some time, it's once in a while they come. So those feces and all of that are very scanty. So I'm also thinking of how to permanently stop. your offense must surely come. It will. But what happens is that allowing those offense to stay in you, that's where the problem is. You have the power and the ability to say no because it is your life. So you say, be angry and do what? And sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. That's your anger. You can be angry. God also gets angry. Because of what we do. Because of the situation and all of that. So, but what he says is that you be angry, but do not sin and do not let your anger go down. In other words, don't carry your anger over to the next day. If somebody offends you now and you don't deal with it, you sleep with it, it will build in your heart. It will stay in your heart, consciously or unconsciously. When you see that person the next day, you will remember what he did. And you start frowning. If you allow offense to build in your heart and you sleep with it over the next day, it becomes witchcraft. If somebody calls you now a witch, I know you will take offense, you'll be angry, but that is what you are doing. Be angry and sin not, but don't let your anger carry over to the next day. If you do it, it becomes witchcraft. It is bad. So how many of us carry anger to the next day? I doubt if there is anybody that is free of it. I mean, I used to. I used to carry anger, malice. Bitterness. Don't think that I am, I used to be like that, but I'm no longer like that. That's why sometimes people, I will shout, maybe somebody does something bad and all of that. I will shout at the person. I will, I will tell the person what you did is wrong. I'm not happy with it and all of that. And after that, that is it. Then for a couple of times, I can't remember who they are and all of that. They will come to me and say, Pastor, I'm really sorry about I say, sorry about what? I can't remember. They will try to tell me what it is. I say, I can't remember. And I mean it very, very, I'm very honest about it. I say, I can't remember what it is. And then they will keep talking and talking. I'll keep thinking and struggling to remember what it is that I said or did or whatever. That she is coming or he or she is coming to say sorry. Difficult for me. I forgot. I've forgotten it. It's not in my heart. Wives and husbands. <laughs> you remember, you understand. Malice and bitterness, anger. That's why you give your husband um, silent treatment. That's why you give your wife silent treatment. You won't talk. About what he did. Sometimes yesterday, sometimes last week, sometimes last month, sometimes last year. Some people carry grudges, bitterness, and all of that for months, for weeks, for days. 
how do you survive? I will show you. What are the negative effects of keeping negative thoughts? What are the effects? Number one, Hebrew chapter 12, verse 15. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of what? Bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be what? Defiled. You want to be pure, but you are not. You know why? You are defied because of bitterness, because of malice, because of anger in your heart. You are defied. You are impure. You are unclean. That's who you are. That's what you are. You are unclean. You can be looking outside, outside like this. You look so nice. You wear good dress. And you are nice to people, and you are nice to this person, and you are gentle to this person, but inside of you, you are dirty, you are smelly, you are stinking in the eyes of God. Do you know why? Because you harbor evil in your heart. This subject is very, very, very. Okay, so Matthew chapter 23, verse 27. Please, you have to be very fast. Matthew 23, 27. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, you are like unto whitewashed sepulchres, which indeed appear what? Where? Outside, but are within what? Full of what? dead men's bones, and of all uncleanness. You can look good and very fine, decorate yourself looking so beautiful as a woman, looking so gorgeous as a man. But inside, is full of all uncleanness, and God sees it. Bitterness and anger and malice and all of that are killing you. You are unclean. You are an unclean person. Just like in the Old Testament, when somebody who has leprosy and all of that, what they do is that when you are walking and all of that, you will be shouting, unclean, unclean. I am unclean. I'm unclean. So that anybody that sees you will give space. That's how you are in the New Testament. Leprosy is sin. Leprosy is a type of sin in the heart. And what is sin? Bitterness. Anger, malice, and all kinds of evil. Adultery and all. those negative thoughts that we have in our hearts. They are the things that make us unclean. It will defile you. And once you are defiled, you are not fit for God at all. God can't touch it. Remember, he's of a purer eyes. He can behold sin, neither can he look on wickedness. He can't touch you, he can't use you, he can't do anything. Meanwhile, you have been fasting. Meanwhile, you've been praying. Meanwhile, you've been engaged in the services of God and all of that, but inside the heart, it's dirty. That's what we have in the body of Christ today. Adultery, fornications, evil speakings, hypocrisies, envies, and all of that. It defiles you. You can't be used of God. You can be running around doing all those things. God is not impressed with it. That's one thing that keeping malice negative thoughts. That's what it does in our life. It is, it is very destructive. That's why at the end of the day, not many are going to make heaven. 
because of the state of their heart. Psalm 66, verse 18, that's another thing that he does. If I do what? Regard what? What does it mean to regard iniquity? If I harbor anything that is not good, unclean in my heart, what happens? That's why God doesn't answer prayers of many. He said, my ears are not deaf. I'm not deaf that I cannot hear. My hands are not shortened that I cannot stretch forth and reach you. He said, the problem is the sin in the heart. That's why I cannot. Look at it here. What is that sin? Disobedience to God's commandment. God said, don't keep malice. You are keeping malice. Negative thoughts. Your prayers will be hindered. Husband, love your wife so that your prayer will not be hindered. If you don't do that, your prayer will be hindered. We, the greatest warfare is not in the realm of the spirit. You bind, you pull down, you cast, you go to the moon and dislodge the ones that are in the moon and in the sun and all of that. And then you stay up in the night and you are doing whatever, you know, dealing with forces and all that, combating with them and all of that. Meanwhile, the greatest enemy the devil is fighting is within. Okay, so... The third one is, we find it in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5 to 7. <clears throat> Having a form of godliness but denying the power of it thereof, from such, turn away, verse 6. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, led in with sins, led away with diverse what? Lusts. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. When you have such thing in your heart, you can, the Bible, the word of God becomes ordinary letter to you. No life inside of it. That's why he said, letter kills, but the spirit giveth life. You read the Bible, you can't find anything, you can't see anything. It's dry. That's why the Bible, reading Bible is not interesting to you, to many. The reason is because they heart. In the Old Testament, before they read the Torah, you know what they do? They do ablution. They go and all of that and wash their hand and their ears and their everything before they can touch it. We don't know. God is holy. We tend to forget. We, we, make, we make jest of it. We make little of it. We try to make nothing out of it. God is holy. And if God is holy, it means that God is holy. Everything about God is holy. With your holiness, you can't interact with God. Isaiah 61, verse 3, another reason, another effect of harboring negative thoughts. To appoint unto them the morning in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of prayer for the spirit of what? Heaviness, that they might be called the tree of righteousness, or trees of righteousness, and the planting of the Lord, that they might be glorified. The reason why we continue to look depressed and moody sin, negative thoughts, because you are what you think. You cannot be thinking negative thoughts and look bright and excited and full of joy. It can't happen. Depression. What brings about depression? Sin. Negative thought mindset. Negative mindset. That's what brings depression. That's what brings all kinds of whatever. If you want to keep away from all this, before you start doing the binding and the casting and the casting out the spirit of heaviness and the blah, 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 and all of that, look at what is going on. Close those doors. Ask God to help you to close those doors because that is where the problem is.
God does not de the design that you spend the rest of your life doing spiritual warfare. That he didn't call you to do warfare. First John chapter 5, verse 18, he said, we know that this whole world lies in wickedness. And anyone that keepeth himself from this, the wicked one will not touch you. You'll be untouchable. We know that whosoever is born of God, sin not, but he that is begotten of son or begotten of God, keepeth himself, and the wicked one, that wicked one will not touch you. And if the wicked one does, why would the wicked one not touch you? Because I have nothing with him. My hands are clean. I don't meddle with his affairs. And I told you that ant cannot come here except there is something that attracts him. Lizard cannot come here except there is something that attracts him. There is nothing. Sin cannot come here except there is something that is attractive. Death will not come. Satan will not come, except there is an attraction. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. I think I have to close with this, and then... He that does what... Will do what? But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have what? If you like. You see malice, keep it in your heart. Two. Who wants anybody? It might not be me, it might be somebody else. Negative thoughts towards people and all of that. You are wasting your time. You are the one holding yourself down on the ground. I told you in First Corinthians, because of time, let me just, uh, okay, I still have about seven minutes. That clock is not correct. Uh, because I want to do a, 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 a um, um, because of those of us who are coming late. First Corinthians chapter four, verse five. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsel of what? The counsel of what? The heart. And then shall every man have praise of God. God judges the heart, what the state of your heart, what you are thinking in your heart. I've read for you, I've shown you where Jesus said, when a man or a woman looks at a woman or man lustfully to sleep with that person, you have not committed that crime. Or you have not slept with that person. You have not stolen that money. You have not committed that crime, but you, you have not seen it in your heart. He said that you are guilty, as guilty as the person that had done it. So God judges the heart. In the book of Samuel, he said that God looks at what? The heart, and man looks at the outward, but God looks at the heart, the state of your heart. Let's quickly run how to take your thoughts captive. First, The first thing that you do, examine your heart. Hmm? Examine your heart so that you will know if there is anything that is, I check my heart always. 
Did I offend people? Am I having some bitterness or resentment towards people? Am I so and so towards people and all of that? Is my heart clean towards my wife, towards my children, towards my brethren, towards every, any human being at all? Do I have any bitterness in my heart towards them? I keep checking. If I do, I will deal. The Bible says, so when you examine, the next thing that you do is to judge. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31, he said, judge so that you shall not be judged. How do you judge? We have done this in the Berea Academy. For those of you who, are, who have gone to, through Berea Academy, you, how do you judge? What does it mean to judge? If we judge, if we will judge ourselves, we will not be judged. So how do you judge yourself? You remember, you examine yourself. If there is anything that is not of God in your heart that you are keeping, you repent of it turn away from it and ask God to give you grace to not to go back to do such things again. That is what it means to judge. Judge means to take it away, destroy it and take it away, condemn it in your life, take it away. And how do you do that? Repent and ask God for forgiveness and for then the grace for him to help you to live a life that is well-pleasing in his sight. And then the scripture that we read before, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, he say, be angry and sin not. Somebody can provoke you. You can tell the person right in his face and all, I'm not happy about what you said, about what you did. And don't just like it. It doesn't. And after you have said it, and that will be the end of it. It shall not be found in your, it will not affect the way you relate to the person anymore. Uh, the next minute. If you do, if it does affect the way you relate to the person, then you have not forgiven it. And better tell yourself the truth. You know, and it is not easy. Say, oh, I'm forgiven. I don't have anything. I'm not easy. And you are lying upon your lies. How do you expect? You can't prosper. God cannot hear your prayer. You are going nowhere. You are dry. You are defiled. You are unclean. That's what you are. You are not deceiving anybody. You are deceiving yourself. And you are destroying yourself. And time will show. And when you see such people, if you look at them, they are never happy. They are very, their face is big, swollen. They are never happy. They are never excited. The state of the heart. Negative thoughts. Mark chapter 4, verse 24. Let me just be fast. Mark chapter 4, verse 24. And he said unto them, take heed to what you hear. So, be careful about what you hear. You know, there are so many gossipers and all of that. When they come, <laughs> let me tell you, you know what this person said about you and all that. <laughs> so, what did he say? And then he'll begin to tell you. And when you finish telling you, no matter how spiritual you are, no matter how big you are in the Lord and all of that, no matter how many fire you are carrying on your head, it will affect. So don't bother listening to such a person. Hey, 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 I don't. Hold it there. I don't want to hear it. Keep it to yourself. He said about me, I don't want to know what he said. You know why you are saying that? You know why you are doing that? Because some of you, you are, you are, you are tail bearers. Your ears are itching. What did he say to him? What did he say? What did he say? Gossip. You will keep telling. And what he's telling you is not good. That, the Bible says, what sort of things are honest? What sort of things are noble? What sort of things are pure? Pay attention to those things. That thing the person is telling you, is it noble? Is it pure? Is it good? You are agent of Satan. You are, mini, you are a minister of Satan, helping him to carry out his gospel. They are telling you about what people said and what they didn't say. You are, you, you, you are, you are planting seed of discord. God will hate. I don't, because of time. It's the Bible says God will hate such people.
And of course, he says, in that Philippians chapter 4, that he said, think good thoughts. Think about things that are honest, things that are noble, things that are pure, things that are good, and all of that. Then the last one is study to show yourself approved. Feed yourself with the word of God. Feed yourself with God's word all the time. Because there is no vacuum in life. When I see, you think I don't see beautiful women, women that are, my wife is beautiful, I have. My children are beautiful and all of that. I look at them. I look at my wife, I look at my children, I look at her. You know what I do? When I look at anybody that is not, I will say, hi, my God, God, you are amazing. Look at how you design this person and all of that. God, God is gracious. God is so, the, he, God is a designer. There is no architect that is like God. And how he frame and design people and all of that. You see, you are giving God what Satan meant to be evil. You are turning it this way. That's how I look at somebody's hair and all of that, instead of seeing the negative and all of that, and say, I say, God, wow, wow, wow. You gave this person this wisdom to be able to put this thing together. You are amazing. That's what I say with my heart. Instead of, uh, uh, you see, you see, then your eyes, your, you, can't, you can't stay. Because once you see, this is how thoughts, you now start you know what is going on in your heart? Like, oh God, how can I, how can I have this one? You just be imagining how, imagine all kinds of things. As you are imagining it, eh, you, you, you also imagine how you are going down into the pit of hell. Just imagine how you are going down to the pit of hell. When you imagine that, you will come out of it by force. There are some things I see. There are some things I see. I plead the blood. Is, you, you are laughing. I say, uh, there are certain things I see. I say, I cover myself with the blood. I cover my eyes with the blood of Jesus Christ. I reject it. I do, I do it till today. I reject it in Jesus' name. Because we are surrounded with all kinds of what? Evil, iniquities everywhere. Remember the topic we dealt with, we are dealing with today. How to take your thoughts captive. We read 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 5 and 6. And we said that thoughts are forms that impresses in our hearts. And they come through what you see or hear or what you taste or handle and all of that. It comes through that way. And there are two types of thoughts, negative and positive. And how thought, you say that thought is what determines your disposition, how you are. If you see somebody who is always moody and depressed and all of that, he does, he is not, any little thing, boom, he will shout. Any little thing, he will fight. He is quarrelsome, he is everywhere and all of that. He attacks everybody. The, he, the person has evil thoughts in his heart or her heart, always. And you never be happy, you are never excited. You are moody and gloomy. Everybody, they avoid you. The state of your heart will determine how you react to any situation. What is going on in your heart will determine how you react to any situation, how you act in any situation. It will show how you are disposition in life. That is why the Bible says, out of the abundance, out of the abundance, I mean, sorry, uh, um, um, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. The way you think, you are what you think. And what you think will determine how you become in life, whether you are going to succeed, whether you are going to prosper, whether you are going to be a great man, whether God is going to use you or not. 
The level to which God can use you depends on the state of your heart. Because everything begins from the heart. Out of, he said, guard your heart because out of your heart comes what? The issues of life. It starts with the heart. Anything that doesn't start from your heart, you will never see. Temptation that does not start from the heart, you can never fall for it. I say temptation that doesn't start from your heart, you can never fall for it. So, how to guard and bring negative thoughts subdued in our lives so that they will never have their say? Because if you allow them, they defile you. And once you are defiled, you have quenched the Holy Spirit. You have grieved the Holy Spirit. God cannot use you. God cannot touch you. You cannot be useful to God at all because God will not put his hand in anything that is unclean to use. You will not prosper. You will not succeed. You are disposed to Satan. You become a, 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 a vessel for Satan to be used, to use and all of that. And any negative bad things and all of that, they happen to you. If you want to keep yourself and all of that, and make yourself available for God, then keep yourself out of all this. Stop bearing grudges. Stop lying to people. Stop, bear, stop not saying negative things. Stop installing them. Uninstall all the negative thoughts and bitterness. And unins you know what it means to install? Uninstall. You punch that button, you will delete it. And you'll be fine. You know when you have so many of those negatives in your heart, I mean, if it is your phone, sometimes your phone has more, no, not virus, um, app, that your phone is overloaded. And then what happens when it is overloaded? It slows down. It slows down. Something that will take one, two, three seconds. It will take like one minute or two minutes, and you'll be doing like this. So what do you do? You uninstall the apps that are not useful, the ones that are redundant and all of that. Remove it. Once you remove it, the thing picks up again. Life is like that. God bless you in Jesus' name. Welcome back from the School of the Spirit and I want to believe that you have learned so much today. That which you have learned today and that which has entered your spirit this morning will be like that seed that has been planted. It will grow, it will germinate and it will bear fruit in Jesus' name. Do not change the dial because shortly we will be going into the main service.